If we know a symbolic representation of where our 10 is, we ought to be able to do a two-digit problem from the left-hand side. Let's try this one. Memory is an important component of mathematics. And there's no reason that for a two-digit plus two-digit problem, we should actually need to carry over anything into this column and show it with a mark. We actually want the children to be able to hold a number in their head while they work on some other things. So let's look at this problem a little bit differently. Let's look at it from the left-hand side. Now frequently, and it tends to happen with numbers that cross the tens bearer, let's try something a little bit simpler like this. Frequently I'll say to a child, what is this number? And if they say seven, I'll say, oh, seven what? And they'll say seven, I don't know, seven, and I'll say sets of 10. And they say, yes. And they're like, what, what is that? What do we call it? And they'll say 70. And I'll say, what is this number? And then they'll get the point and they'll say 40. And I say, okay, good. What's 70 plus 40? You'd be surprised how many times a child will say 111. The reason why they do that, of course, is because if they've learned it in school, they drop the single here and then they carry over the 10. Be careful, teachers should always explain this as carrying over one unit of 10, not carry the one. All right, so let's make sure we speak about it properly. But inevitably what winds up happening is that they'll say that that's eight and four and that'll give me a 12. Now, did the number 121 ever come out of their mouth? No, they knew that that was 11 plus one, and so they basically thought about this linguistically as a 12 and a one. They didn't make the connection that that was 12 sets of 10 and one single, but over here, let's look what happens if we do it slightly differently. I've got 70 and 50 here, all right? So we're gonna treat these numbers as sort of two different sections, 70 and 50. How much is that? And I ask the child to hold that in their mind for a minute, and they say, um, 70 plus 50, Usually they can find it's 120. We hold, we write that because that's what it is. A nine and four, that's 13. Now I asked them, I said, is there another 10 in the 13? And they'll say, yes. I'm like, where do tens have to live? Tens have to live in the tens position. So we have one set of 100, three sets of 10, and three singles. We just have 133. They're much more accurate and have a better number sense when we think about it this way than when we think about it this way. This actually develops a lot more understanding of the numbers holistically, and it also gives them permission to treat this as its own number that can be broken off and dealt with separately from this, which it can because it is place value based. This will impact their long division in a radical way and make GCFs, LCMs, all these things much easier to handle. Larger numbers won't seem so scary because they don't seem so big. And it helps resolve a lot of uh, mental calculation issues later on. So in level 10, we're going to uh, require or consider mastery the position when they can do it from the left-hand side, holding both sets of numbers in their mind without writing anything down and do the mental manipulation that allows them to write a full and final answer 133 from the left-hand side.